David Ensminger, E-N-S-M-I-N-G-E-R. How do you think all of his different personalities sort of show up in his artwork? Um, well, I, I, I think what's interesting the artwork sort of reveals his taste for art, <laughs> right? So if you're looking at different things, you can tell his punk rock heritage because he will do things like put a, a cutout head of Johnny Rotten on a piece. You see his love for pop culture when he inserts Elvis into something. Uh, you see his love for black culture when he inserts sort of cultural references in, in his heart to that. You see his constant love of skateboarding, right? And Skate. Muscle. Yeah, muscle cars showing up in, in his work. Uh, so you see hot rods and skateboards and all these things. And sort of, um, I think that's how he expresses his, his different personalities as art. And then some of it is more purposely surreal than other pieces. And um, I, I, I think what you see is that he was a, through his pieces, is that he is a blend of sort of, um, American conceptual art, with sort of European avant-gardeism, with sort of his own um, twist on it all. And what, what you're really looking at the art is that you're looking at a man and, and, and at any given time, there's something buoyant and, and radiant and transcendent. And it could be in, in his choice of colors, it could be his choice of materials. He's using plastic and Christmas lights and gaudy day glow and going to the thrift store and buying little bits of, of broken plastic soldiers and gluing them on and lots of glitter and all these things. It's like a fun house. Each piece is kind of like a fun house. Um, it's an, it's a, an experience, it's a, it's a whole world. And some, you know, so sometimes, what, what I would have to say, it's never dark, it, it, you know, it's never venal, it's never angry, it's never mean, it's never cynical, it's none of those things. And so that's often what we associate with punk art, and yet he presents this completely other side to it, which is the joyful um, and the humorous and the sort of uh, wicked, but in the sort of this friendly way instead of a, a sort of a mean way. How do you think all of his different personalities sort of show up in his artwork? Um, well, I, I think what's interesting, the artwork sort of reveals his taste for art, <laughs> right? So if you're looking at different things, you can tell his punk rock heritage because he will do things like put a, a cutout head of Johnny Rotten on a piece. You see his love for pop culture when he inserts Elvis into something. Uh, you see his love for black culture when he inserts sort of cultural references in, in his heart to that. You see his constant love of skateboarding, right? And Skate. Muscle. Yeah, muscle cars showing up in, in his work. Uh, so you see hot rods and skateboards and all these things. And sort of, um, I think that's how he expresses his, his different personalities as art. And then some of it is more purposely surreal than other pieces. And um, I, I, I think what you see is that he was a, through his pieces, is that he is a blend of sort of, um, American conceptual art, with sort of European avant-gardeism, with sort of his own um, twist on it all. And what, what you're really looking at the art is that you're looking at a man and, and, and at any given time, there's something buoyant and, and radiant and transcendent. And it could be in, in his choice of colors, it could be his choice of materials. He's using plastic and Christmas lights and gaudy day glow and going to the thrift store and buying little bits of, of broken plastic soldiers and gluing them on and lots of glitter and all these things. It's like a fun house. Each piece is kind of like a fun house. Um, it's an, it's a, an experience, it's a, it's a whole world. and. Some, you know, so sometimes it, what, what I would have to say, it's never dark, it, it, you know, it's never venal, it's never angry, it's never mean, it's never cynical, it's none of those things. And so that's often what we associate with punk art, and yet he presents this completely other side to it, which is the joyful um, and the humorous and the sort of uh, wicked, but in the sort of this friendly way instead of a, a sort of a mean way. So what do you think is his lasting impact or legacy um, on either mu on music, art, the culture of celebrity, or in Austin and Texas in mm -hmm. general? Yeah. Well, I think his legacy is um, manifold, and it depends where you're coming from. I mean, you could look at him just as sort of an Austin character, 
right? Um, you can look at him as a, as a music personality. You can look at him as an outsider artist. Or in my book, I kind of argue he's a visionary artist. Um, I think he's all those things. Uh, for me, the legacy is that commitment and sincerity. I think when you live in an age of irony and a cynical age and in a jaded age, um, everything at your fingertip age, he represents a completely different phenomena, that sense of sincerity, honesty, uh, passion, um, no concern for hipster stuff, no concern for pretension, no, uh, no concern for guile, but driven by let's make original, vibrant, distinct art. And he, I think he really saw himself on this trajectory with the great artist of all ages and of all eras. I mean, he, when he would write poetry or he would write about his art, he would talk about Salvador Dali. Um, but it's also about the personal story, about overcoming and not being limited. For instance, he came out to a metro school. Um, I, was, I was teaching in a community college, and we had a, a magnet school on campus for high school kids who were very smart, but for some reason didn't do very well in school. So they were dropping out, they were giving bad scores. So they, they got him into this magnet program and I said, Biscuit, could you come speak to them? And he came and with a crowd of sort of the different kids, these are all the high performing kids, the arty kids, but they're also kind of the unruly kids or the kids that messed up, the, the behavioral problem kids. But he sat there and they were just transfixed. And there had been like 35, 40 of these students just sort of looking at him and he talked. And what he talked about was, was sort of not being limited no matter where you're from, no matter what your background, no matter uh, you know, the sort of boundaries in your life, you can be who you want to be. And I showed them the CDs and he talked about his art and some of the shows he had had. And they just sort of, you know, they stood there just like, oh my God, in sort of this kind of awe. Because he, is this, he was this amazing personality. And I think for me, it's something I think about every day. I think about Biscuit. <laughs> I'm cry. But... Um, you know, I struggled real hard in my life to sort of uh, figure out what I wanted to be and how I wanted to do it and what I wanted my legacy to be and to be close to somebody who lived it um, so openly and had no concern for comments or criticism or uh, um, uh, boundaries, you know. And, and, and here you have this guy, and I, I can't talk about what he suffered, and he did suffer as a child through some pretty trying times, he came out on the other side, and he saw himself as a shining star. You know, nothing was going to get out of the way, and nothing made him happier than the share. And the only thing that hurt him 